Hello everyone, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink. As promised, back with another video. <laughs> Trying to crank out as fast as I can get them edited. I have tons of just things I'm behind on as always. One of them being the color throwdown challenge that we have a new challenge every single week and I'm part of the little design team we have for it and with everything, just being sick, all of it, I'm so behind. So this is for last week's color throwdown challenge. There's still a little bit of time to play along. I'll have a link to the challenge in uh, my blog post as well as the inspiration image. And then there will be a new challenge this week. So you can always check that out and like subscribe to the color throwdown challenge blog. All of that I have linked in my blog post, which will be linked directly below the video. So this challenge, I was completely inspired by the inspiration image, which again, I'll put on my blog. I don't want to put this, those images on my YouTube videos just because anyway, so yeah, totally inspired because it was a little gnome with bunny ears. So of course I had to use this image again. So there's a little bunny ear gnome. He's from the Simon Says Stamp Spring Gnomes stamp set that has been very popular, rightfully so, cause it's adorable. So I'd stamped it onto Nina Classic Crest Solar White 80 pound cardstock. You can use, I've been having, people have been asking about that. Um, you can use the 110 pound version for this, especially if you're a beginner, I actually recommend the thicker cardstock. It kind of gives you a little more leeway because it can absorb a bit more and not bleed outside the lines. I just use the 80 pound because I've been doing this for years and it's just habit. But lots of different cardstocks do work with Copics. These are just the Nina Classic Crest Solar White in the 80 or the 110, 110 pound version are some of the best. So stamped the image, colored him in with my Copic markers. I gave him a striped hat. The colored challenge itself is pink, white, and purple. I added a little bit of green because if you go on my blog, you'll see the image and his little hat was striped those colors. And of course I had to do it. Like, how can you not? He's too cute not to. So I gave him a little striped hat. I used my white gel pen to add, you know, little highlights. I did end up stamping the little outline heart from the same stamp set because there was space on the cardstock. Why not? So I stamped it and colored it in with the same pinks. And then I'm going to die cut everything with the coordinating wafer dies. And then for my card front, I'm using this older, this came out a couple years ago. This is the Doodle Egg background stamp from Simon's Stamp. So I pulled that out and I'm using it with Lawn Fawn's Sugar Plum Ink. I just have the little ink cubes of Lawn Fawn. They do ink cubes and they also do like the full size ink pads. Really like their inks, really like their cardstock and the colors. Well, I have been a Lawn Fawn collector for a long time now. <laughs> I, don't, I know I don't use it very often, but I do collect it. So I pulled it out though because the shade of purple was perfect. So it's their sugar plum cardstock, the sugar plum ink. I did my oldie but goodie standby with background stamps. I have the background stamp facing up, inked it up, brought the cardstock to it, and then just pressed it in with my fingers and we're good to go. I didn't worry about the edges because I was already planning to cut this down a little bit. But I got my impression. And then I'm gonna cut it down with one of Simon's basic rectangle wafer dies, as well as one of the nested circle wafer dies because I want to create a window. So I'm just going to tape them both on at the same time. Save me, you know, a few seconds. So I'm just going to tape them into place with washi tape and then run this through my die cut machine. So then I've got my card front started. And then for the sentiments, I'm going to use the sentiments from the Spring Gnomes stamp set. So I just have a scrap of cotton candy cardstock here. And I'm going to um, use my anti-static powder tool and then stamp the sentiment with Simon's clear embossing ink and then heat emboss it with detail white embossing powder. So I stamp it a few times always to make sure that I get everything stamped because more often than not, especially when I'm stamping with clear ink, one, I'm either not paying enough attention or I'm not using enough pressure. Sometimes it's just harder to see obviously because it's a watermark ink, it doesn't show up. Um, really dark, especially on lighter cardstocks. It shows up good on darker cardstocks, but on lighter cardstocks, sometimes it's a little harder. So I find it's just, I'm getting into the habit of just stamping it multiple times, like inking it up and stamping it multiple times to save myself the aggravation of pouring on the embossing powder. And then you, that's when you realize, you know, you missed a bunch of spots. So I decided to stamp the second sentiment on that same scrap because there was enough space. So I'm stamping both the sentiments, white heat embossing, etc. And then once those are completely melted, I'm going to die cut the hoppy Easter sentiment with one of the nested circle wafer dies. 
And then the other sentiment, I'm going to die cut with one of Simon's sentiment label wafer dies. And again, I kind of purposely spaced them far enough apart so I could die cut them in one pass. I get anything to save me a few seconds. <laughs> so tape those into place with the washi tape again, and then run these through my die cut machine so that they are both die cut. And then the one that I die cut with the sentiment label wafer dies, I'm just going to trim off the edges with my paper trimmer. The other one being a circle, I don't have to do anything with. So I'm going to trim that off with my paper trimmer. And then I decided to use the leftover circle from the background. I'm going to use that on the inside of the card. So I just peeled that out of the washi tape and the wafer dye. I'm going to adhere that to the inside of the card and then adhere the sentiment with it. So I'm just going to adhere that into place with my craft tacky adhesive. Been getting a lot of questions about this adhesive in the last few days. Um, it's still one of my absolute favors. It does clog. It's kind of the nature of this type of adhesive because it's a little thicker than other liquid glues that um, a lot of the crafters like to use. I honestly keep, I have a little pin cushion that a fabulous um, viewer sent me. I showed it a couple years ago, I think, in one of my Happy Mail hauls. Anyway, I have this adorable little pin cushion on my desk and I keep a bunch of pins. So I use a pin to unclog it. Um, sometimes depending on the time of year you get it, if it just freezes in shipment, because some of mine have frozen over the years. Um, I let it completely thaw out one, but you can also add a little bit of distilled water, like just a couple drops. Do not overdo it. Just like with other things, when I say add distilled water, less is more. <laughs> so a couple drops, thin it out a bit. This can work with any liquid adhesive if you need to. You just go very conservatively. It might take a long, longer to get it to the consistency you want, but it's better than adding too much water and then ruining that glue. So I do that. And then I always store it upside down, like because the lid is flat, it's perfect. So I always keep it stored upside down. I use a pin to unclog it. I rarely have to thin it out, honestly, sometimes near the end because you've used it so much and there's so much air in it. I think it's not more, but this is still my absolute favorite. Mostly too because of the price point, like the size of the container of what you get. And then the price point, like I've gone through probably not even half a dozen over the last few years. Like, and I use a lot of glue. So anyway, Went on that little thing just because, yeah, it's been asked a lot. So hopefully that helps anyone. Um, I use the Big Mama phone tape on the background, pop that into place onto my card base. And then I put the foam tape on the back of my little gnome, of course. And then I'm going to pop him into place, just kind of peeking out from that little window I'd created. So got him stuck in there. And then I did the same thing with the little I'm all ears sentiment. I just cut down. Um, a little bit of the foam tape with that and then adhered that to the back of the sentiment. I'm going to peel off the backing, pop that into place and then those three little hearts that I had stamped and colored and die cut, I'm going to adhere those as well and I'm just going to adhere them with the craft tacky adhesive and I'm just going to use my embellishment wand to lift them up, stick them down, you know. And then as always, <laughs> you can always leave it here. But I'm going to add bling because that's just what I like to do. So I have some pink crystals. These were the Studio Cadia October crystals mix. Any obviously light pink crystals are going to work. So I kind of sprinkled these throughout the card front once I knew when to taper off. <laughs> I adhered them into place again with the craft tacky glue and my embellishment wand. And then before I put anything away, I wanted to do a little matching envelope because I've said this before. If I don't do the envelope at the same time, I'm not going to do it later because, you know, I'm not going to dive through all my supplies and pull everything out to, you know, make a matching envelope. So I try to remember to do it as often as I can when I'm making the card. So I have a little cotton candy envelope here and all I'm going to do is stamp that little gnome onto the bottom left corner of the envelope with the clear embossing ink. Stamp it a couple times, make sure I got the whole thing stamped. And then I'm going to coat it with that detail white embossing powder and then just heat emboss it. And just, that's it. You know, just simple and cute. Just gives it that little extra something. So after I poured on the embossing powder, quickly brushed off any little excess that was hanging around that didn't need to be there. And then I'll melt this with my heat tool. And then my little card and envelope is done. So as always, I will have the links below the video in the description box. So I'll have a link to my blog post and then I'll have the color throwdown challenge info in there in my blog post as well. 
I'll have the supply list, links, everything. So you can check that out in the description box below the video if you are interested. Thank you all so much for watching and thumbs upping and commenting and subscribing, all of it. I really appreciate it. I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.